Hello Sigma. We are done with kinematics now and we are going to resume our journey of dynamic. And what we are going to look today is a pulley which has two masses, a mass M1 and another mass M2 attached to this is tight string, right? And this pulley has a radius R. It is given that the distance of the mass M2 from the ground is Y2. The distance of mass M1 from the ground is Y1. The distance of the pulley from the ground is uh, YP, right? And the surprise here is that this pulley is not stationary. The pulley is accelerating upwards with an acceleration A. Okay, this is YP. So this length is YP. The distance of the pulley, the center of the pulley, the distance of the center of pulley from the ground. So now, uh, before we begin solving this problem, you need to know that to solve any dynamics problem, the most important task that we have to do in the beginning before we begin solving the problem is draw the force diagrams, also known as the free body diagrams. So what are the forces on mass M1? The forces on M1 is gravity in the downward direction. So I'll call it W1, the weight of mass M1. And since it is connected to the string, this string will have some tension, the force of tension in the upwards direction. So that will be applied by the string on this mass M1. I shall call it T1, right? And we have another mass M2. Similarly, the forces on this will be W2. And in the upwards direction, I can call it T. Now the gist here is that T T1 would be equal to T2. Why? Because this is a single string. Remember, if the string does not change, see, this is a single string that is passing over the pulley onto this direction, right? So the string is not changing. This is one string. And if the string remains the same, right, then the tension also remains the string. That is, you can remember it this way. Single string, single tension. Okay, so the tension on all points on this string will be the same, which is equal to, I would say, T. So what I'm saying is T1 is equal to T2 is equal to T. Right, so this is going to give us two equations. Now that this, uh, these are not going to remain stationary. Now remember, you might have seen wells, right, and these type of pulleys in the world. Unlike those pulleys, this is not going to rotate because we have neglected friction. We have neglected friction. And as we are going to see when we discuss rotational motion, that friction is what will cause rotation in a pulley and the acceleration of these bodies will be completely different in that case. Right, so here this pulley is not rotating because there is no friction between the string and the pulley which is necessary for rotation. So actually this string is going to slip on the pulley and not make the pulley rotate. Unlike what we observe in real life because uh, in real life you observe that uh, pulley which is present in the wells rotate but that is because there is friction between the rope and the pulley of the wells. But here we have neglected friction. Why have we neglected friction? Because it is hard to work with friction. So we actually begin with the most easy case because if I, I can do that, I know physics so I can directly jump into friction and I can explain rotational motion, but you would not be able to understand it as a beginner in physics. So as a beginner, what is important is start with the most easy case and then slowly remove one of the assumptions to get a better understanding of the physics. Anyway, so these two masses are obviously going to accelerate, right? So let's say the acceleration of this one is obviously going to be Y1 double prime. That is how these distances are going to change. And similarly, this one's acceleration would be Y2 double prime. So using Newton's second law, what would we get? We would get that T1 
which is equal to t. So I'm just going to write them equal to t. So t minus w1 would be equal to m1 into y1 by 3, which is the force on, what is this? This is nothing but the force which I can call f1 on uh, m1, right? So the net force is not zero in this case, is obviously equal to the sum of these two forces t1 and w1, but since they are in the opposite direction, one would be minus. So we have uh, we said that the upward direction, let's say, is the positive y direction. So the downward direction is minus. And since w1 is in the negative y direction, that's why a minus sign over here. And similarly, we would get t minus w2 is equal to m2 y2 double prime, which is the force on how is this a force? This is nothing but mass into acceleration. This is Newton's second law. But are two equations enough? We want to find y1 double prime. Our task is to find y1 double prime, y2 double prime, and t. Right, find this. So now here we have to find three things. But over here, we just have two equations. If you, if you know math well, then you will know that you cannot find three unknowns from just two equations. You need another equation. And what is that equation going to be? We shall call it the constraint equation. And what exactly is the constraint equation? As the name suggests, a constraint equation is something which constrains or limits the motion of this body. And what is limiting the motion of the bodies in this case is the string. How, let's say if I cut the string over here, or if I cut the string over here, then obviously this is going to fall with the acceleration due to gravity, right? So we know the force on this. But this tension in the string is what is stopping this body from uh, moving at acceleration due to gravity. And hence this string is what is restricting the motion of M1 and M2. Right, and how is it restricting the motion and how can we obtain this third equation? Okay, I'm just going to explain to you that right now. So, do you know what is the length of the string? If this distance is y1 and this distance is y2, right, then what is this distance? This is obviously yp, right? This entire length is yp from the center of the pulley to the center of this mass, right? This is yp. What is the distance from the center of the pulley to the center of this mass? We have yp minus y1, obviously. This entire, this entire distance, this one, minus this would be equal to this, right? And similarly, this entire distance, yp, right? From the center of pulley to the ground, minus y2 would give me this distance, right? So this would be yp minus y2. Let me erase this, okay? So this would be yp minus y2. So we got this length of the string from here to here to the center of m1, right? From the center of the pulley to, we got this, from the center of the pulley to M2, we got this distance also. And what is uh, left is this, this this length, right? What is, if the radius is R, then this is going to be pi R, right? You know, this is the circumference of a circle, half the circumference. So what is the total length of the string? The total length of the string is yp minus y1 plus pi R plus yp minus y2. Now this might seem very confusing at first sight, but carefully just watch the video again and you will really understand how this, uh, how we have got, got this by careful thinking, right? Just, just think about it once in your head. So now we are going to take double time derivative. Now what is the time derivative of it? Zero, because the length of the string is not changing obviously. So this is zero is equal to yp double prime right minus y1 double prime plus the radius of the pulley is not changing with respect to time so that is again zero yp double prime 
minus y2 double 10. So I have not done anything but just differentiated this equation entirely with respect to time twice. That is double differentiated with respect to time. So we will get 2yp double prime would be equal to y1 double prime double dot plus y2 double dot. Right, I have used Newton's notation here where the double dot means double time derivative, which again I have explained in my previous videos. So from here we would get y1 double prime is equal to 2yp double prime minus y2 double prime and y2 double prime is equal to 2yp double prime minus y1 right now if i call these two equations as equation one i call this as equation two right and i call these equations equation three and equation four right then what i can do is i can just subtract equation two from equation one so if i do one minus two and why i am doing that because I am going to eliminate t now. See, this if I subtract equation 2 from equation 1, then obviously this t will get cancelled because t minus t I will get. So the t will get cancelled, right? So that is what, exactly what I want. One of the unknowns to get cancelled, so I have to work with only two unknowns, which is easier. So what will I get if I subtract equation 2 from equation 1? I will get w2 minus w1. Would be equal to m1 y1 double dot minus m2 y2 double dot. And then what I can do is substitute y2 from equation 4 into this equation. Right? So this y2 I'm going to substitute over here so that I get m1 y1 double dot minus m2 into what is y2 to yp double dot minus y1 double dot and uh, opening the brackets I will get minus m2 into 2yp double dot plus m2 into y1 double dot. So I can take y1 double dot from these two terms. So I will get y1 double dot m2 plus m1 this is m1 so m2 plus m1 minus 2 m2 yp double dot is nothing but uh, w1 minus w2 right this was it no it was w2 minus w2 yeah so what is yp double dot yp double dot is the acceleration of the pulley because yp is the distance of the center of the pulley from the ground so what is the acceleration of the pulley? Remember we had called it A, capital A. So yp double dot is nothing but A. So yp double dot is equal to A. So what we would we get? We wanted y1 double dot and we have found it. w2 minus w1 plus 2m2 y a right divided by m1 from this equation similarly we can solve uh, for y2 double dot in a similar manner which i am living as a homework this is very very easy once you have understood how i have found y1 double dot right so y2 double dot is exactly the same and nothing not even a bit different than how we have found y2 y1 double right so if you solve for uh, uh, y2 double dot what you would get is as expected right we would get w1 minus w2 plus 2 m1a divided by m1 plus m2. this is what you would get once you solve for y2 double dot which i'm leaving as a homework this is very easy and once you attempt how to find the uh, y2 once you attempt this 
you will really understand how i have solved the problem otherwise you are if you just look at the video you will not understand anything and you might even forget what i have told but if you really solve for y2 double dot then you will understand what i have done in this problem and now to find t we can simply substitute w y1 a uh, double prime in our first equation or y2 double prime in our second equation right instead of y1 double prime i can just substitute the value which we i have just found right so i will get t1 minus t minus what was it was a w1 so t minus w1 was equal to m1 y1 double dot and just substitute y1 double dot from here so we get t minus w1 would be equal to m1 into w2 minus w1 plus 2 m2 divided by m1 plus m. so that would become t so tension would simply be m1 divided by m1 plus m2 times w2 minus w1 plus 2 m2 a plus w1 and uh, again another homework for you is to substitute w2 y2 double dot sorry to substitute y2 double dot this equation into our second equation this one over here what i i did was i substitute y1 double dot into the first equation this one but your task for the homework is to substitute y2 double dot into our second equation and obtain the same see the tension is the same in the string so you have to prove that so if you substitute y2 double dot into the second equation then you should get the same tension which is i am leaving as a homework for you and you have to do exactly the same thing which i have done over here only maybe proving them to be equal would be a little tough but at the end of the day that is what will teach you physics solving the problems using your own head and not depending on someone else for solving the problems you have to try out the problems on your own to learn physics so this is it we we have found a y1 uh, double dot we have found a t and a y2 double dot which is what we were supposed to find now one thing which uh, i wanted to tell you in this video and another term for pulleys which you might have heard is the of the atwoods machine right of the atwoods machine right so what exactly is the atwoods machine the atwoods machine is nothing but it is just a pulley the difference of the atwoods machine is that a is equal to 0 that is a atwoods machine does not accelerate at all it is stationary so if a pulley is stationary it is known as atwoods machine otherwise if it is accelerating it is in general known as a pulley so that's it guys i hope you have understood the concept of pulley very well and also know now the difference between what a atwoods machine and a pulley is i will see you in the next video with more uh, more such interesting physics uh, concepts and to motivate me to create more such videos do not forget to subscribe to my channel and also like this video thank you for watching